Another approach that I want to show you is to have a form itself and to display it as a totally separate form. The question is, how do we get the data that we have in our independent form? How do I get that back to my main form? So let's quickly create another form. So we right click on our project and we add a new item. We add another form, Windows form. Oh, sorry, I forgot to change its name now, but its name is currently form two. Let's quickly change it here. It won't change the file name, but it will change the form name that we refer to. So it's FRM insert data. And we are now going to use it to refer to this. Let's change it text. It's text to insert data. On this form, we're going to have text boxes for each of the fields that is in our database. We're going to add new data. So it will be four text boxes. Am I right? No, wait, sorry, three name, surname, age. And then the last one will use a checkbox. Whoops. Okay, so there's the first two, third. Each of them will get a label, which just describes what it does. Remember, a good principle for when we use with work with labels is assume that your user doesn't know anything. So you must guide them through each way or each step, and you have to tell them this is where you're going to see a name, for example. So label one will say something like enter name. Label two's text will change to enter surname. Label three, its text is just age. And then the last one we said we're gonna use a checkbox. Checkbox has a tick box, yes or no. We can just here in the prompt use the the text, we can just say it's provincial player. Yes or no, check or uncheck. Good, so each of the edits just needs a descriptive name. So the first one is edit name. Second one is edit surname. No, wait, wait sorry. EDT surname and the last one is EDT age. Checkbox. Checkbox. We'll just give it a name as well. It becomes CHK provincial or prov. Okay. And now we can add new data to our database. Oh, and a button. We should probably in some way say yes or okay for the data. So a button is also necessary. Its name will say button okay. And its text, we can just say something like add to db. All right, so the first thing that we're going to look at with this form is how we we create to this form. How do we get this form to display? So in our main program, our main form code. Sorry, let's just quickly go to its design. So for the insert menu item insert data, if we double click on it. So here we're going to create another object of that form. So that we have our class name we said is form insert data. And our object is my insert window or form or whatever you want to call it. And we call it the constructor for a new form insert data. Let me just add a T here, my insert data. 
or window. Right, then. Then we need to display this little window. The same as we did with the MDI one, we're not going to set it as an MDI form, it's a form on its own, but we still need to display it. So we say my insert window dot show, but not only show, we're going to have a show dialog. The reason for this is if you just show the form, then it will open the form and independently of what happens on this form, your main program on this side will just go on. So it won't stop and wait for information from the other form. So it makes a new trend for your second form and the two threads run separately, but we don't want that. We want the new form will read the information and this program needs to wait for that information. And when the information is complete and we clicked on OK, then we'll close the new form. The process returns the information to your main program and then the main program will continue. So if we only say show, then we'll find this asynchronic problem, but show di dialogue will prevent the main program from continuing before the new form is done. So let's quickly test it. We say insert, insert data, and look what happens. It's not an MDI form. It's not within my MDI area. It's a form totally separate. Now we need to say, how do we uh, return the data? How do we send it? Oh, wait, sorry. And let's just quickly look. Insert data, but look, in the background, I can't do anything. I can't go insert view or again. It just flickers. So it's waiting for us to finish with the form. If you close it, then I can go on with the my main program. Okay, so back to my new form. On the button click event. Later, when you work with Java, you're going to have a look at the idea of instance variables or properties of so that concept we're going to use here to have information from my second form and return it to the main form. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to declare variables, but with an access modifier. The access modifier says, can, can this global variables that's within this one form, can it be viewed from outside this object? The default is no, we call it a private variable, but we can put access modifier in front of it that says public. And then these variables, we can review these variables from outside its scope. So we have a public string, if name, now if is used, or the name with an if in front of it, it's just a way to show that this is a property or an instance variable, and it's not just a normal variable that's only used within this class. There are different ways how this is, what it's called. I use if, but you can also use a, a different one. So for each of these fields, we're going to create this variable. So it's a public string if name, it's a public string if surname. Let me just look at what I'm doing on my computer. We have a public integer for age, and we have a public boolean for provincial. Oh, sorry, it's if age and if provincial. So when I click on my button, remember, we're now on the insert form, then each of these instance variables and I assign it to the value of the correlating text box. So if name gets the value of text name. Why is it unhappy now? Text name does not exist. Let me just quickly look at the form. The design. I did give them names. Oh, I called it edit. Ugh, sorry. I'm now back on Delphi. 
where it's edits in our text boxes, but let's just go with that name, EDT name. It's text we assign to the if name variable. If surname gets the value of edit surname, it's text. And if age, which is an integer value, receives the value of a convert to for two int so to do so we convert text to an integer value from edit age text and lastly we'll change the boolean variable if provincial it's assigned the value of my checkbox checkbox provincials checked property true if it's checked false if it's unchecked and a last thing that's left to do if we clicked on the okay we've now assigned the values then we're going to then we'll close the form so we'll say this dot close now this refers to the instance of the form which is currently displaying close that form this close so let's see if that works before we catch the values on the other side there's our form we can type in anything here that's gibberish for now add to db and close the form okay so those variables are now available because if we go and look at our main form form one here we have created the object and we showed it and we closed it but the object still exists in memory it didn't suddenly disappear so now we can read those values by referring to my insert window remember it's that form's name and we can save if provincial if surname if name and let's see Evan, if h we can find in this way so now the only thing left to do is we need to just compile the instruction that will take this information and write it into the database right now i just need to look at my cheat sheet so that i can remember how to do it okay so we're gonna have a try catch prompt again and we're going to open our connection what did we call it uh, i have to look here at the top now oh we haven't prepared it set up a connection because we're in our original form so we'll have to prepare or set up a um, connection from scratch so we'll have sql connection oh and then look it also doesn't give us suggestions of SQL connection because in this form we haven't said that we want to use the SQL prime information so we include this library say using system data SQL client and then when I start typing SQL connection then those classes are available to use because we've included the library so we create a connection my connection equals a new sql command or connection sorry not command and now we need to specify the connection so let's quickly go back let's go to server explorer find our database there look at that connection string and we copy it so add quotes connection string inside let me just see why is it moaning oh the try is incomplete we need to put in a catch we're gonna have an sql exception that's what we'll catch its name is error and if there is an error display message box so message box show display the errors message 
Right. So we have the connection, and then we're going to open the connection. So my connection open. If we open the connection, we are going to write an insert SQL statement to to take this data, capture it, and write it into the database. What we will need is that we saw for the bit data type, we need a one or a zero, but we have a true or a false that we get if provincial from. So just before we do this, before we write the query, we're just going to do a quick conversion. We say string provincial is initially just an empty string. Then we're going to have a look with an if statement. What happens with my insert window? Sorry, it doesn't want to complete. It should have a bracket. If my insert window, if provincial, and remember it's a Boolean, so we can use it as is if it's true. The first part of the if will execute. If it's false, the second part of the if will execute. So if it's true, then we say our string provincial gets the value, ooh, sorry, gets the value one. But otherwise, under the else, provincial will be zero. And remember, it's a string value. So we'll put it in brackets. Well, not brackets, quotes. Sorry. So now the rest of our database steps can be executed. We're going to make a new SQL command. Yeah. SQL command. We're going to call it SQL insert. It's a new SQL command. And in the constructor, we give it two things. We give it the SQL statement as a string. And we give the connection. Its name is my connection. So what does the SQL statement look like to write data to the database? The structure is as follows. We say insert into table name fields. Which fields do we want to enter? We're going to put in all the fields. So we have the fields name, surname, age, and provincial in brackets. So, add to the players table in the following fields the values and here in brackets in the same order as the field names we're going to include the information. So here it's handy that little trick where we use the dollar sign and the curly brackets. So give us in the first position which correlates with the name Use my insert window if age followed by the second position surname. Oh, sorry, not age. Oh, sorry, I'm crazy. Just the surname. No, name. Oh, come on. We've been busy too long. So we have the name in the first position. Second position. I'm just going to copy so that I can repeat this. In the second position, my insert window, if surname. Remember, these variables come from our new form, right? Keep that in mind. Then we have the surname. Oh, on either side of the text values, remember, single quotes. I keep forgetting that. Right, so name, surname, here we have age, and look, it has, it does not have single quotes because it's a numeric value, and lastly, the provincial one is yes or no, and we already did a conversion, we said one or zero, so we can just make the variable provincial.
That should be a curly bracket. Okay, so there is no SQL statement. Insert into the player's table four fields, name, surname, age, and provincial, the following set of values, where the values correlate with each of the fields. And we just need to remember here at the end to close the round bracket. Okay, if we prepare the SQL command, now we are going to use a new adapter to execute the SQL command. In this context, we don't have an adapter yet. So we're going to create an SQL data adapter. Its name is my adapter. And it is a new SQL data adapter. Now, in the previous versions, we had the data adapter, my adapter. We specified its select command, but now we're going to specify its insert command. So it has an insert command, and that command is the SQL command that we've prepared, SQL insert. Then that command to execute it in the adap adapter, we use our adapter, insert command, execute non-query. Good. The reason for this is insert isn't really a query. We, like just a normal we call it a query query but it isn't a query because a query is a query which implies that you will get a return so what we're doing now is just putting data into the database so it executes this command but this command isn't a query so we use execute non-query and if we're done with that we can just close the connection because we now have sent the information to the database. Because this is under my try catch, if something goes wrong with the process of writing data to the database, we'll just get an error message. And we don't have to do anything else. So let's test it. So there is all my data from player one to player six. Let's add new data. And we're not going to go back to the backwards form before insert data is not complete. So we add a new name. Let's put add myself today. I'm only 25. And yes, I am a provincial player. Click on add to DB. The window closes. We didn't get an error message, but we don't see the information added to the database. So we need to refresh it, view all data in the table, and there's a new entry. 